We needed a replacement basement door for our motorhome CC. So we took a drive to an RV salvage yard in Kentucky. There we found and learned a lot more than we expected. This place is basically where RVs go to die. is right next to an actual cemetery because this is where RVs come to die when, right next door to where people go after they die. Go. Buy zone RV. It's, it's, they do rentals um, but they are also it's primarily a salvage yard for RVs uh, and they cater to higher end RVs as well. It's mostly motorhomes. Look at them. It's a humongous facility. But like here's a great example right here. This old Umar Dutch Star seems to have had an engine fire. It's a bit sad, isn't it? It is a bit sad. There's a probe. A couple of them. Might be in, yeah, I think they're just customers coming because it's got a toad on the back. Yeah, those might be customers. Oh man, look at that. Another engine fire. Oh. Look at this one. That's big time. Mmm. Oh my God. Now the purpose of sharing this video is not to scare you. It's not to make you afraid of buying, traveling or living in an RV. But it is to show you a reality of life that you may not usually get to see. Like anything in life, things happen. Storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires, accidents. It can happen to cars, trucks, homes, boats, and it happens to RVs too. So this was a pretty rare and unusual experience, so we wanted to share it with you and give you a look behind the scenes of an RV graveyard. A bit different to a house fire. Like, they just go up so fast. That's the year, 19. It's the 39th coach they bought this year. Just collect some anytime they let me have about a week back. So this is a what is it, a 2000 country coaching tree? Wow, they just like left all this stuff. You can still smell it. I don't know how long it's been here. Oh look, it's got like left there. Birth candles, toaster, look at this. Mashed potatoes on the counter. Mm. Can't really see it. It's like you have a life in a barn home and it goes up in flames and just leave, literally leave everything. All the kids, it was a family. Yeah, they had games. Leave all the stuff in it. As it turns out, the Country Coach basement door wasn't a fit for our RV, but we didn't exactly walk away empty handed. We learnt a lot driving around the property with Kenneth and walking the lot with Mike where we got to learn a lot more about why some of these RVs end up here. This place is huge with almost 1500 motorhomes spread across around 100 acres in pretty much three main sections. Every brand, every size, every kind of motorhome you can think of. Buy Zone isn't really open to the public. We managed to get a special permission to do a tour and get escorted around the property, but basically they deal with almost all of their customers by phone. And literally, if you're looking for a part on your motorhome and if they don't have it in the warehouse, they can go out to the yard and they know what they have, they know where it is, and they just go out there and take it off if it's a basement door or something that isn't already in the warehouse, and they'll just ship the parts to you.
look down. Bison RV Parts claims to have the world's largest selection of used RV parts and motorhome parts for sale. How it works is they buy salvage RVs and transport them to their facility in Kentucky where they strip them of undamaged engine, battery, generators, furniture and other valuable parts which goes into their warehouse. They then leave the rest on the RV on their enormous lot. Uh, basement, doors, panels, etc. And when a customer calls looking for a particular part on an RV, they just simply go out in the yard and find it. Around that route, goes around, back around. Where do you even get them down there? There's a tip. Jeez. Now, keep in mind this place has been collecting old salvage RVs for over 10 years. There are literally millions of RVs out there and this place has close to 1500 of them. Mostly motorhomes as you'll see, as typically towables like fifth wheels and travel trailers either don't stand up as well to severe damage or they just don't have enough value left in them that's worth salvaging after an incident. So this likely also explains a lot of why motorhomes are much more expensive than most towables with all the construction and components that go into them. So what they do when they bring them out here to this yard is they strip them of the batteries and the engines and everything like that. So they're pretty much just the bodies, the shells sitting out here now with the related parts and doors and things like that, what's still remaining and salvageable. And presumably other valuable stuff that they put in the warehouse, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. We just wanted to get this drone up in the air before the rain. Something like close to 1,500 motorhomes here on over 100 acres of property here in East Bernstadt in Kentucky. Apparently on these motorhomes it's still got parts that it's worth something to someone especially if you've got an older one and they don't uh, they don't make them anymore so yeah definitely very sobering experience being here The vast majority seems to be things like a, this looks pretty obvious, it's a fridge fire to me, uh, engine fires, air conditioning fires, and a lot that come in from an accident is from blowouts from the front tires. So even if your tires look to be okay, they could just be old and compromised. If you have a blowout, man, that could uh, end badly. I don't know what happened to this airstream. It's like it was in an accident and rolled or something. This one's all the way along the back. This stays together more than most travel trailers would. They just completely disintegrate, but uh, airstreams, yeah, a little bit more intact. This one's been here a while. 2011, it's all flex steel seats have seen better days. Of course, we're not sharing all of this to scare anyone off our being. I mean, this is a fact of life. There are wreckers yards for cars all over the country. Uh, I, I guess this is, just feels a little different because we live in these things. For those of us that full-time or, or part-time do extended travel, it's, it's more than just a vehicle to get you from A to B. It's uh, often just, is your home, your office, your life as it is for us? But uh, definitely 
definitely a sobering reminder of just just how fragile they are, you know, just how easily they can disintegrate or go up in flames or become destroyed if they're in an accident. How easily they can be totaled. Fleetwood Revolution. Man, fire is so destructive. Small full travel. And apparently a whole bunch of RVs here just got picked up and flipped all on top of each other. So a lot of the damage that we're seeing here may not even be what happened when it was out on the road. And this one looks like it was either in a really bad accident or it was one of these motorhomes that was uh, tossed about through that tornado. It is bent up. The glasses stay together from the windshield. This frame. Oh, this is a new mar. Couldn't even identify it until I saw this. It's been here since 2014. See, basement doors are already gone, so this is a fiberglass. It was a Tiffin Allegro Red. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not going inside there. Oh man, fire. Some of these are pretty sad stories. As you'll see, many RVs end up in a salvage yard like this because of fires. The most common causes are RV fridge fires, engine fires, electrical fires. But before you panic, keep in mind that most RVs are not lived in full time. So a lot of these fires happen when no one is in them anyway, say if they're in storage. And it's suspected that some RV fires are, well, not so innocent. It's pretty rare that people are inside of these RVs or at least unable to escape when a fire like this happens. Living the dream. More like a nightmare now. <laughs> wow. Depends on their insurance. They might be living the dream. Morgan said we bought a home So some RVs end up here after an accident, but 95% of them are caused by tire blowouts and usually from tires that have aged out. And a powerful reminder of why it's so important to take care of your RV tires and change them when they've aged out, usually in the five to seven year mark. The more you take care of your tires and prioritize their safety, the less likely you are to have a tire blowout. Used to drive bands around. I've hauled. I went all over the country picking up all these homes too. Oh, really? Yeah. I used to haul cars before we started doing it. All over, and it's nice to get paid to get all drive. It costs us money to drive around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inside one of them right now, this is a Monaco Diplomat that had a fridge fire and it really took hold of the whole roof here and things have melted off the ceiling onto the cabinets and it uh, feels eerie when you step inside one of these. It's a very different experience to come inside and smell it and feel it and just know this was somebody's home that been, uh, or at least their vacation vehicle. You can still see a lot of their stuff inside here. It's uh, that's yeah, interesting to come inside it. It's a very different feel to come inside than to see a picture. Careful. It's a little dangerous in here with all the melted plastic to come down from the ceiling. But uh, who knows when or where this thing caught on fire. But you know, these things could have a fire at any time. I remember in the news there was a country coach storage facility where a whole bunch of RVs got destroyed. So doesn't necessarily mean someone was in it at the time. Fire seems to have happened at the back of this fridge here. I don't want this to 
be instilling people with fear or terror or anything. That is not the purpose of this video, but just to show you something that you may not otherwise normally get a chance to see. We'd certainly never seen anything like this before today. There's still a lot intact. Trashed, but intact, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mike told us they've definitely seen a reduction in the number of RV fridge fires over the years and that's mostly likely as a result of a few things. One, we're seeing more and more residential refrigerators in RVs these days. Two, you can actually make modifications to your RV fridge to increase its safety. And three, there's just generally more awareness of that risk. So I think people are being more diligent now about taking care of their RV, their fridge, keeping an eye on things, keeping it level, things like that. 95% of the wrecks are from oil. That makes total sense. But tires, people think they look fine, they go really old. When we bought our motorhome, it had 12 year old tires on it. Yeah. I took it straight to a tire shop <laughs> before we even put fuel in it. I'm like, Oh, that you want to know what these things are made of? Here you go. Yeah, that's it's over two inches yeah. thick. Yeah. Wow. These are quality here. Yeah. Monaco old signature. signature. Oh yeah, an older signature. Yeah. And these old signatures, I've seen a few pristine examples on the road, and they are amazing. We've seen coaches from that 2006 era selling for over 200,000. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if this one would be worth. No. Hey, you could rehab it, hon. No. You could do an ultimate RV makeover on that one. No. Not. Mike, I think I think the battery needs to be changed in the smoke alarm in this one. I can hear it chirping. We got some front caps and front bumper pieces down here just laying out in the field, but they all look brand new. Right, so inside the warehouse is stuff they've already stripped off of motorhomes that they know are going to be likely things to be resold. Like up behind you here, there's some fenders from tag axle motorhomes. doors and you can have them traditional raised panel or you can make them like our coach flip them and though a lot of those RV fires were from refrigerator fires there's plenty of examples of RV fridges that have not caused the fire. That is some unique styling. Some lavender and pink captain shears. It takes a little bit of something out of the captain peel. I don't know. But we've got a matching pink couch for whoever wants that captain's chair. <laughs> This is totally cool. They've got all these diesels and they've stripped the motors out of them before they take them out in the field. Look at all these engines. We've got the big, the big red ones, the big Cummins, the yellows, all the, cat, the Caterpillar engines. Pretty cool. 